Hey there, Hudson Valley. Today I'm at a spot known as the Mount Rushmore of the East. Now, it's not quite as big or as impressive as Mount Rushmore, but it's still a pretty cool place. I'm Joel Craig, your guide, Hudson Valley Lifestyle and Real Estate. Let's check it out. I'm at uh, Pratt Rock in Prattsville, in the heart of the Catskills, uh, named after Zadok Pratt, an early settler here in Greene County, who uh, became big in the tanning industry. The uh, Catskills were covered in hemlock, and uh, the bark of the hemlock was used to tan leather. So Pratt harvested the hemlock and uh, made himself a very successful businessman. He uh, also dabbled in banking, finance, politics. He was a uh, U.S. congressman um, and he was in the military and he also had five wives. So I didn't mean to imply that he had five wives all at the same time. Now that was throughout his lifetime, but he did leave a very mixed legacy in terms of the environment. See the Catskills used to be covered with hemlock and uh, through his process, they harvested tens of thousands of hemlocks. And so now hemlock stands are actually pretty rare in the Catskills. They've been replaced by hardwoods. This is a monument to his favorite horses and dogs. Apparently he was a big lover of both. And it's said that he owned over a thousand horses in his lifetime. So supposedly Pratt planned to uh, carve his tomb into the rock face. And uh, when the workers began cutting the rock, they discovered there was just too much water coming, coming down for it. So he um, had to change his plans. And by chance, he happened to run into a young sculptor who was kind of down and out, needed a place to stay, hot meal, and uh, he struck a deal with him. He decided uh, to go to Plan B and carve his family legacy into the cliffside. I'm assuming that this is where they started to build the crypt for Zadok. Supposedly the horse was the first figure carved in the rock and it represents Zadok Pratt's appreciation of horses and good horse flesh. And of course you can see some of that water dripping down that we talked about earlier. And there is the bust of old Zadok himself. And representing the working man of the Hudson Valley uh, and his service in the U.S. government. And a plaque to his children. I don't see a plaque to his wives. Maybe there wasn't enough room on the mountain for all five of them. Pratt's son, George W. Pratt, was somewhat of a Renaissance man. Uh, he had been educated um, in some of the finest universities in Europe. He spoke multiple languages fluently. He had an incredible library and it said that he had the Bible in 35 different languages. He was the quartermaster general of the state of New York. He was the colonel of the 20th New York State Militia. He ran his father's business and he was a senator from the state of New York. In other words, he was a young man who was destined for big things, governor, perhaps candidate for president. And he accomplished all this before he was 32 years old. And there's the bus of Pratt's son, the Honorable G.W. Pratt. Unfortunately, you can't see it too good from here. Maybe we can get a better shot uh, when we go down the mountain a little bit. So George Pratt was also, amongst his uh, many other accomplishments, a student of history. And in fact, he uh, founded the Ulster County Historical Society and uh, wrote and published a pamphlet on the burning of Kingston by the British during the Revolutionary War. 
So being a student of history, um, he realized uh, in 1860 that the nation was headed, headed for war. And so several months before the war started, he gathered his officers together and they made a public proclamation that if war should break out, they would immediately offer their services to the Union. And in April of 1861, that's exactly what happened. So Pratt led his men for a 90-day enlistment, um, and then they came back to Kingston, uh, reorganized, and uh, volunteered for uh, longer service. They were designated the 80th New York Volunteers, but they continued to carry the 20th New York State Militia moniker. And unfortunately, and very tragically, at the Battle of Second Manassas, or Second Bull Run, Pratt was mortally wounded, leading his men in combat. Um, he suffered for a few weeks. Uh, they brought him back to Albany, where he passed away at that very young age of 32. So here is the Pratt coat of arms, and directly above it, is a hand with the motto, this hand for my country. Now the hand and the motto were the motto of George Pratt's 20th New York State Militia. And uh, on their white flag, they carried a bloody red hand and, and that motto, this hand for my country. Supposedly, uh, the origin goes back to uh, Gaelic folklore. And uh, I'll tell you a paraphrased version of the folklore. Uh, basically, um, there were two guys, uh, they may have been vying for a young lady's hand, and of course back then if you didn't own any land, uh, you were a nobody. So they had the opportunity to win a large track of land in a foot race, and as they were raced along, um, the one contestant realized that um, he wasn't going to beat the other guy on foot, so he quickly grabbed an axe, chopped off his hand, and threw it across the finish line, shouting, this hand for my country. Somehow I don't think this belongs as part of the Pratt family. Um, sorry to see somebody mess up this beautiful spot like that. So check out Pratt Rock in Prattsville. It's a pretty easy hike, at, at least if you stay on the trail, unlike me. Uh, and you get some great views. I'm Joel Craig, your guide to Hudson Valley lifestyle and real estate. And if you like coming along on my adventures, Hit like on the video, subscribe to the channel. I'll see you out there.